Hello and welcome to Taylor Talks Comics. Today we're going to go over the comic book series by Charles Sewell and Ryan Brown called Curse Words. Stay tuned. Okay, so today we're going to cover the 28-issue series done by Charles Sewell and Ryan Brown for Image Comics. First, I'd like to ask that you like this video, subscribe to the channel for any more, uh, so you can get all the updates on all, any more videos I release on comic books, as well as uh, leave some comments down below if you have read this series or if you're interested in reading this series. So, Curse Words is covered in um, five different trade paperbacks, uh, but they've also recently ran a Kickstarter for a all-in-one all uh, hardcover. I do not know to this day if they're going to release that to the public or if that's a Kickstarter-only type deal. Otherwise, you can get these very affordable trade paperbacks. Now, I do have this other exclusive hardcover, which I'll cover as well. The way I got into this series, though, I've always seen pictures of this series and as you can see just judging based on the covers here it very much stands out amongst uh, other comic books very colorful you see koala bears wizards those kinds of things and actually I'm a part of the omnibus collectors um, Facebook group and within that group a member Faria offered the uh, idea of letting Kind of like a uh, online library type deal where she would send out all five of these books to one person and then they send them off to the next person on the list and so forth. So far I think uh, it's gone through like eight different people across the country or the United States and um, I was the latest to borrow them and I'm going to be shipping them out to today for the the next person on the list. So it's a pretty cool idea that's going on in that Facebook group. I, I would even like to take part of um, starting that again because it's just a cool idea to uh, offer up a chance to read some physical copies of books. So yeah, um, first this is the Roadshow Edition. It's a hardcover. It's very exclusive. I think it's exclusive to these comic book shops. I don't know where you can even find this anymore um, or exactly how this even came about. I'm assuming all these comic book shops got together and helped produce this, including Downtown Comics, my hometown of Indianapolis. So that's pretty cool. Um, but otherwise, it's standard size. This hardcover is and it includes all the same material as the volume one trade paperback so your volume one trade paperback will look different on the cover here and it'll be soft cover obviously but amongst these five very affordable trade paperbacks that all run uh about 16.99 a piece they uh you can get the series and you can find them on on uh like instocktrades.com i think has them for like 11 dollars. so five times 11 about Less than $60, you can get the entire series of curse words. So what is curse words? Um, here's another cool thing, too, that they did. We uh, we all signed in here, too. I believe it was autographed by one of the creators as well. But what is curse words? So curse words, like I said, created by Charles Sewell and Ryan Brown. Um, letters by Chris Crank throughout the series. And then it says colors by Ryan Brown and Michael Garland. I would be curious how this worked. I would, if I ever had a chance to speak to Ryan Brown, I would ask him. My guess would be that Ryan Brown came up with the uh, color palette, maybe, and then Michael Garland went through and actually did the coloring, because the color palette's very distinct. And I wonder if Ryan Brown, when he was doing the artwork for this series, had in mind what kind of colors he wanted to use. So curse words is about. A wizard named Wizard, and that's this fellow right here that you see on the first page. He's on the front cover there. I believe that's the image of the first trade paperback, if I'm not mistaken. But that's Wizard, and he has a koala named Margaret. And then he also, and he's living in New York. And he uh, 
There's a long lost love too named Ruby Stitch that you'll see their uh, lover's quarrel play out throughout the series as well. So Wizard was stuck in a world called the Whole World. And Whole World is spelled H-O-L-E, not W-H-O-L-E. So it's kind of a play on words there. And in that whole world, you'll see this guy. He's like the uh, the dark villain of the series. His name is Syzygy. And Syzygy has nine wizards working for him, doing his bidding across other worlds, other realms, that sort of thing. And he sends off certain ones to destroy Earth. That's like one of his goals. In each issue, you'll see a splash page like this. It's really cool. So... Within these volumes, they have the cover. Um, it's like the, without the trade dress cover, just the image. But each issue has this splash page. And one, like the second or third page, you, like you'll get like the intro and the splash page that says curse words with an image across the top. Really cool like thematic thing that you like start to anticipate as you get to each issue. Um, but anyway, so Syzygy has all these wizards doing his bidding. He sends Wizard to destroy Earth. Wizard, at this point, is a despicable human being, um, which reminds me a lot of like a typical Rick Remender type character. If you're familiar familiar with Rick Remender's work, he always has like this. His stories typically follow a, thema a theme of like having a despicable human being that then is forced to do good and to re thus redeeming himself and also saving the world, kind of thing. That's kind of what we have going on here with Wizard, and he ends up falling in love with Earth and that brings about the issue of him not wanting to destroy Earth anymore. And then Ruby Stitch goes through. Um, Syzygy then sends Ruby Stitch, again Wizard's former love, to Earth to then destroy Earth as well. And as you can imagine, that causes complications as well. And then you might be asking, what about this koala bear that's always hanging out with Wizard? She's great. Her name is Margaret and she, throughout the series, will turn into different animals, usually of the Australian outback variety. And um, the backstory with her is really fantastic as well. I, I just want to keep flipping through the series as I keep talking about it. You see right here, this is Margaret That's a platypus. Um, another great splash page. So like I said, there's the cover image, a couple intro pages, and the splash page. So, and Margaret's backstory is fantastic as well. Uh, you can see, like, they start a, uh, it's very much, you know, like, your typical, like, lawyer business, if you will, but it's like a wizard for hire type deal where they have people um, doing magic as well, uh, doing magic for them to solve problems. Um, but they all have a very extensive back backstory. Like, even Margaret's backstory, at first you think she's, like, this sidekick koala bear, but as the series goes, and I don't want to spoil anything, you'll find out, how deep her back history goes, and you'll really get a development of her character as it goes on. Another great splash page. Um, and that's the kind of the conceit of, of all the characters. The concept is these wizards fish out of water in New York type deal. Going back and forth from their wizard world to the real world and doing battle um, for the sake of humanity um, amongst each other kind of thing. So you'll even get like great shots of like typical New Yorkers you know, complaining about, oh, here's another wizard battle. Here we go. It's going to destroy the city again. And then we're going to be left in ruins cleaning up uh, after their mess kind of things. So you get, get a lot of, like, humanity in that regard. Um, but it's one of those stories. It kind of reminds me, too, of uh, Tom Scioli's uh, Godland. Um, Tom Scioli, and who's the writer for Godland? Um blanking on it dang it i'm sorry i'm going to do a video on godland and when i do i will promise that i will know um who that is this what this color is by addison duke and ryan brown and ryan brown's the second on the headline there i wonder i don't know i wonder if that's deliberate or if that's what that means who's doing what for the coloring i've never seen a coloring breakdown like that before um but you get a great cast of characters like just like this image here you see a bunch of different other magic people it's got to say Papa Shango for any old WWF fans. Um, typical witch doctor, but that's what it reminded me of. Um, 
But yeah, so it reminded me of Godland where it's like this high concept fantasy world where you typically expect with wizards and magic, that kind of thing, you expect kind of a written dialogue that matches something more of like a Tolkien, um, Lord of the Rings type deal or Harry Potter even. Um, but not, you actually, Charles Sewell does a great job with the dialogue of making it more contemporary and modern. Uh, you'll hear people kind of trash talking and talking um, using like everyday lingo, like your typical New York uh, American dialogue. So it's it's kind of adds a fun aspect to that fantasy world, if you will, a merging of both. And it, he does merge them very well um, to where there's not... It blends well. It doesn't. It doesn't stick, stick out like a sore thumb. Um, so yeah. So you get all these this high concept fantasy idea with all these wizards, but you by the end of the series you'll start to fall in love with the characters and want to know. This was a great page. Anything with underwater, nautical themes with someone wearing this type of outfit. I'm all here for. I'll read any comic book with that in it. I recommend them down below in the comments. But um, you start to fall in love with the characters and get to know them and you start to want to follow their story. So as far as like how I would rate this book on a, you know, should you read this kind of thing, I'm, it, uh, volumes one and two, we're talking about the trade paperbacks here, so that's volumes one and two included the first, uh, what is that, ten issues? Yeah, ten issues plus the first holiday special. Um, those I would, I was into. I was like, this is a great concept, it's a great idea, I'm in. I want to see where these characters go and what goes on with their lives. Volume 3 was the only one that felt kind of like it was dragging down a little bit, but it was still very much necessary to get through it because it's building towards the climax. Volume 4 picked right back up, so it, you know, if we're going on a, a line graph here, 1 and 2 are up here, 3 dips down a little bit, 4 goes right back up, and then 5 was fantastic. The ending, they stuck the endings, uh, stuck the landing on the ending so well. I was here for it, like the end. Sorry, I want to edit that. There's a small edit there because I, I had to block out a spoiler. But it ended so well. Um, as, like as you're building towards the story, you can just. It was fantastic. So, highly recommend this series. It was a lot of fun, just fun comics. It was very different from your standard comics, too. And I think a lot of that has to do with Ryan Brown's awesome artwork and the coloring. Um, so here's the spines too, I just want to show this off. Oh, I got these all out of order for the spine shot. Sorry. Here's the spines. And again, this first volume was that exclusive hardcover, which I don't know where you can get that from. Um, but the trades all match. And then here's the backs. Um, but super fun, super colorful, super different, very cool character designs. Uh, Charles Sewell and Ryan Brown each have like letters and stuff in the back that they write about um, how much fun they had with the series. Charles Sewell calls this his favorite series he's ever done. And this was my first uh, time reading any of either of their works. I've never read any Charles Sewell. I've been wanting to read his Letter 44 run, which is like a political intrigue space drama type thing to my understanding so i'll definitely be picking that up next and then as far as ryan brown goes he also wrote god hates astronauts it was another series that i want to read because his artwork is awesome and it reminds me of he's definitely one of those uh, modern day artists that was obviously influenced by kirby you see a lot of kirby energy in his work maybe not so blatant as like a tom shioli who's just like unabashedly a Kirby uh, clone, I guess, quote unquote. Um, but a lot of that same energy. And then to find out that Ryan Brown named his child Kirby. So that makes sense. Um, I'd be shocked if he named his child Kirby for any other reason, but maybe he did. Uh, so yeah, this was Curse Words. Five tray paperbacks you can get. Potentially an all-in-one hardcover omnibus um, soon would be hitting shops. I hope so. I, like I said, I borrowed this from people on the Facebook group, so I will, I don't own it. Uh, but if that hardcover does come out, I think I probably will will buy it to read it again because um, it plays out very well into the story that I think it probably rewards you for reading it, uh, rereading it, 
which is, is great. So a lot of fun characters, a lot of fun comics. Highly recommend Curse Words. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, hit that bell notification icon so you can get some notifications to my other videos. And comment down below if you've read Curse Words, what you thought of it, if you're planning on reading Curse Words because of this video, or any other recommendations you have of works by Charles Sewell Ryan Brown that I should dive into. Thank you guys. Have a great one.